sure if you can hear it, but the crickets are here and so is summer. And with summer often comes summer camp, and with summer camp you will inevitably run into uh, bugs. And sometimes those bugs are crickets. We've already gone full circle and we're only a few seconds into the video. Today I wanted to talk about bugs, and at first I was a little bit hesitant to talk about this. Because uh, I wasn't sure if I had that many good bug stories, but the more I kept thinking about it, the more I kept, you know, thinking of different stories that involved me and my family that uh, surround the topic of bugs. I think it all started back when I was four or five. We took this trip to my great grandmother's house. On the way up there, it was like uh, we were on this really dusty road in the middle of nowhere, probably literally the middle of nowhere. We had all stopped our cars because one of our relatives had gotten out of their car and she had gone up to uh, this tarantula and I remember I was like on the right hand side in the middle. I looked out the window and I could see this all going on. She went up to it and I was just like, I was bewildered because it was this ginormous like, you know, tarantula. She went up to it and she had no fear. <laughs> And she grabbed like a dead branch off the side of the road and um, and she, she went up to it and she got the tarantula to get onto the branch and she picked it up and was just like looking at it and inspecting the tarantula. And so I asked my mom who'd been driving at the time, I go, hey mom, can I get out of the car? I want to see the tarantula too. And she goes, no. <laughs> You cannot go out of the car to see the tarantula. I was really disappointed that I couldn't go see the tarantula and I'm still a little bit upset about that to this day. And my mom tells me if my great grandmother who we were going to go visit had been with us at the time, she probably would have been out there inspecting the spider as well. <laughs> I also grew up with this story that my mom told me about when she was young. One of the big science things back in the day was for kids to uh, have pinned butterflies, and I'm not really sure what it was all about, it's kind of cool. But they would always go to my Nana to uh, get the butterflies. She was really good at going and finding the different like cocoon chrysalis things, and every once in a while she'd even like let one go so the kids could watch it hatch out of the cocoon and, you know, fly off. And like I said, she was really good at finding these cocoons. So one Sunday morning, my Nana goes out and she finds a cocoon, and she brings it inside and does the thing you normally do with butterfly cocoons. She puts it in a, a jar and puts the top on and she pokes some holes in it uh, so it can, you know, have air go in and out. And it was a Sunday, so they went to church and, you know, left the cocoon there, you know, whatever. And they came back home uh, to find um, something very unexpected. Did you know that there's more than one type of cocoon? In fact, praying mantis cocoons look uh, very similar to butterfly cocoons apparently. Instead of a, you know, praying mantis coming out like a butterfly comes out, you know, it's fully developed and stuff, there are hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of tiny itty bitty little green praying mantises. And, and you know those little holes she poked for the air and stuff? Yeah, they, they got out. Um, they were everywhere. But instead of killing them, because I mean they can't just kill all the baby praying mantises, because you know that's gonna leave just as much of a mess, um, and you know killing, uh, they took each and every one of them outside of the house and let them out there. Yeah, they were just, they were just scattered everywhere. They were on the counters, they were on the floor, all you could see was green. It was not the Sunday afternoon that they were expecting. So next time you go out and you're looking for a butterfly cocoon, you better pray that it is actually not a praying mantis cocoon. <laughs> so I believe it was sixth grade and we must have only been a few weeks into the school year because I'd already forgotten my science book and it was like last period and I was just like nah. So I had to go from my science class to my locker. I got the textbook out of the locker and I brought it back to the classroom and I come in there and everybody's like, you know, freaking out and they're tense. It's like, what I miss? And everybody's sitting in their desks just like this and they're all going, oh, there was this cockroach and it was going across the ground. And I was just like, dang it, I missed it. Oh, come on. I missed all the excitement just because I forgot my textbook. And they were just kind of like, y you're joking, right? You what? I mean, it's not every day you get to see a cockroach in the classroom. I mean, th that must have been an interesting scramble. The next day, I kid you not, the very next day, I'm in math class. And, you know, I'm minding my own business. I'm just sitting there, and the person to my right goes, Psst! Psst! 
Not Frank. What is it? There's a praying mantis in your binder. And I was just kind of like, whoa, there actually is one. Dude, what? It's just kind of trying to get into my little binder. And the baby praying mantis. By that point, the whole class had stopped, you know, working on math. They were like, not Frank! Oh my gosh! You know, there's a praying mantis! What are we gonna do? Ah! And it was just really funny, because I could tell. I was just like, well, thank you. You know, uh, I, I know you heard that I missed the cockroach yesterday, so th thank you for this little, you know, thing. And of course, we can't have praying in public school, so, you know, needless to say, the insect's life was uh, shortened a little bit. So it was my first summer in the youth group, which would be the summer after my sixth grade year, and after our big summer camp where we're outside and stuff, we went paintballing. I think it was during, like, the break in between one of the different sessions. We may have just had lunch or something. I noticed a group of the guys were formed in a circle. They were all just standing around, and they were trying to crush something, you know, crush a bug. I, I came up and I, you know, kind of joined the circle, and... I was watching them and they they were trying to crush an ant, but not just any regular ant. This ant was big, like really big. It was um it was like this big for an ant that's, you know, really 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 big. It was bright red and it had a black spot on its back. And they kept trying to kill it, but just when we thought somebody had killed it, you know, they would take their shoe off of the ant and the ant would get up and would be totally unharmed. So they started calling it the zombie ant, and for good reason. You know, this ant just would not die. And they were all trying their best to kill it, but I mean, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't go. And so I spoke up, I go, um, hey, can, can I try? And, you know, they were all like, oh, you can, you can try, but I, I don't, I don't think you'll be able to do it. I mean, it just, it's just not gonna die. And usually when a bug won't die, you normally stomp on it a good deal, and then you try to twist it into the ground, you know, as to smush it. I smushed and swished, so to speak. And I kid you not, one of the guys dubbed me the Zombie Ant Slayer. It was an interesting title for a sixth grade girl to hold, but you know, I was honored. Okay, so I know you get it, I, I'm cool with most bugs, uh, but I mean, there's gotta be some that I hate, right? Indeed, that is true. I despise mosquitoes. They are my mortal enemy. Though sometimes they seem immortal, they are my mortal enemy. Some people say you can see beauty in everything. Mosquitoes are not one of those things. Also cockroaches. Yeah, I know, I said something about cockroaches earlier and about how I missed out on the situation. Yeah, but that's because the place was crowded and it would have been really funny to see people freak out. But in general, cockroaches just... No, no, I can do most bugs. I can do wasps. I can do bees. Oh man, that reminds me of a different story. Okay, well there's this one time I was in the middle of the ocean on a boat and uh, a bee stung me like right here, like right here on my arm. And I was like, we're in the freaking middle of the ocean. Do, do I look like a flower? Am I just that fragrant? Do I have flower power? I suppose so. I'll take it as a compliment. But most bugs I can handle. Cockroaches? <sighs> I, I can kill cockroaches, it just takes me a while uh, to build up the courage. Back when we had my beagle, uh, we had her sleep in her crate in the laundry room and because there was less light in there and you know it was easy for her to fall asleep in there. In the middle of the night one night, I tiptoed down the stairs and I decided I wanted to get a glass of water. So I was contemplating whether or not I should turn on the light. I knew if I turned on the light, then she could wake up. I don't know if you've ever heard a beagle howl. It is unlike any sound you have ever heard. And most people don't like hearing that sound in the middle of the day, much less in the middle of the night. So this was a crucial decision whether or not I should turn on the light. I went against my gut, I turned on the light, and I'm mighty thankful that I did. Cause as soon as I looked around the corner, right where I was going to be stepping to get the glass for the glass of water, there was a cockroach. And if you do not live in Texas, you do not know what Texas cockroaches are like. They usually average about this big. I mean, this is like my hand. It was, it, they usually range about this big. Yeah, those antennas count. They are big. And just, ah, uh, no, 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 no. I just, never mind. Forget water, water is for the weak. Abandoned ship. Mm, let's just, let's just not, let's just not. 
So that's about it for this episode of Frankly Not Frank. Uh, do you have similar stories about bugs? I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be posting a Frankly Not Frank video every week. Uh, and every once in a while you'll get movie reviews and song covers and yeah. Make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. My, my channel, Miss American Pie. You click the vid, yeah you did, now you wanna subscribe. And good old Not Frank will upload in no time. Sing and share with your friends and click like. Share with your friends and click like.